So today we're going to look at an exciting opportunity for electricians in the shape of UVC disinfection. We become the cleaning channel. Not exactly, Gary. Well, you're right, Gary. So disinfection, but not the kind of disinfection as you traditionally know it. We're going to use UVC lamp technology. Okay, and we're going to look at it in three forms. We're going to look at it over here in the form of doing objects, and here in the form of air and in the form of surfaces here using the same UVC technology but in three different ways, Gordon. Yeah, now UVC, it is obviously challenging times we've been living in at the moment, but challenges brings opportunity. And perhaps if you're a bit like me, your inbox has been full of seemingly miracle products that offer disinfection with UVC. But let's remember, UVC can be incredibly dangerous if you don't use it correctly, yeah. both to objects themselves your skin and particularly the eyes. So the products we're going to look at today deal with the aspects Gary mentioned, but also deal with the important safety aspects. Okay, so let's first of all take a look at, say, one of these lamps or tubes that's going to give us this UVC light that certainly we don't want to look at or be close to our skin, Gordon. Yeah, well, I've got one here, Gary, so I'm going to take a closer look at this. Okay. So this might look familiar. It does, yeah, it looks very familiar, apart from one glaring missing factor, there's no phosphoro coating on the outside of this, what effectively is a fluorescent tube, Gordon. Yeah, so it is, it's a, it's, you know, UVC is not a, a new technology, it is the underpinnings of how fluorescent tubes work, and obviously this one, yeah, the phosphor's missing, Yeah. but underneath the phosphor is that UVC emission that's normally blocked by the phosphor and the glass, but obviously in this one it is a special glass for UVC, and then obviously allows us to use it to disinfect them. Again, disinfection with UVC is not a new technology. No. It's been used in lots of applications, you know, in water, in a lot of industrial applications, but obviously in these current times it finds new applications. Yeah. So these UVC lamps will inactivate bacteria and viruses, and we know how a hot topic at the moment, Gordon, these this viruses is are, aren't they? I think this is the lighting industry's equivalent of Domestos, but has lots of obviously advantages that don't need chemicals and things like that. So let's look at the principle okay. in the first one, which is this, this chamber here. Okay, it looks like an oven, but it's not. And what it does will disinfect objects. So let's have a look at how it works, Gary. Just going to take a look inside our germicidal chamber. So open the door. You can see it's highly reflective inside, so that distributes the light from our four UV tubes evenly around the chamber and we'll put our objects on the stainless steel shelf. So let's bring in some of our tools that need a good disinfection. Cool, there's an old legacy tool gone in. I'd imagine that's never been near anything to clean it in its time. Yeah, well, Gary, just to, just to prove that this doesn't damage sensitive things like electronics, that's my phone going in there. I am due an upgrade, so if this goes horrendously wrong, I get a new phone. So you let's are just very brave, that. very brave. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna record whilst in the chamber. So close mm. the door. Push the start button, that's going to start a one minute cycle. Okay, so we'd probably see the light through here, will we? Yeah, uh, yeah. there it is, so through the inspection window. Oh, the phone's still working. So, uh, okay, so the process is underway and we've come in through one door. Is there a door on the other side as well, Gordon? There is, so we'll go around it. Obviously, if you had this in, a, in an application, you might want to load the used objects at one side and unload the cleaned objects at the other side so you don't mix things up. So that's okay. it has two doors. You might even build it through a wall, depending on the application. Okay, so I think we've got a digital clock around here and we're counting down the time. Yes, yeah, so we can see our one minute timer counting down. Disinfection in progress. Okay, you couldn't open that door either, could you, with the process going on? No, so there's an interlock, so yeah, both doors are firmly locked while the cycle's taking place. Looks like your phone's still working. Good picture. Yeah, it is that, yeah. That's, uh... I, I've got an emergency stop on it as well, though, if I needed to get in there, haven't I, Gordon? Yeah, and obviously you wouldn't want to be in there yourself while that's going on. Of course not. Okay, so we're nearly out of time. So we should see the light go out as well when the clock stops. There you go, yeah, and they did. And the door will open now, yeah? Yep. Yeah, it's see. locked on. Let's have a look, see if the phone still works. Let's hope not. Yeah, looks like it is, yeah. Okay, bit of luck there for you. Okay, and then we can remove the objects and... Yeah, so now they've been process. disinfected. Okay, yeah, clean on the screen there. So can you show me any functions on the screen? Yes, yeah, so we've got some maintenance functions so we can check our lamp life and if it possibly needs a, a lamp replacement. The other button, Gordon. Nope, the other one. Still the other one. Yay. Okay, so we're back to the start there. You're going around the other side now. Ah, you've opened the door. Yes, yeah, so it tells you that other door's open. Yeah. Obviously you can't start it until both doors are closed. Again, the cycle starts from the other side. Countdown start is about to start again. Ah, right, okay, so we'll see the light come on again. 
Yep, there it is. Okay, so the process is underway for the, the second cycle that we're doing now. Well, that seemed an easier process than taking those hand tools and wiping them all individually over in order to inactivate those viruses and germs, Gordon. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, that's a, that could be a, yeah, it's easy in there to, to, to miss an area and obviously it involves using chemicals. It does. Possibly if you're, if you're going to be handling something all day. So yeah, this is ideal for possibly think of those uh, supermarket scanners that people tend oh, to have now. Okay, so you don't yeah. need to visit the checkout all the time or possibly even in a museum. Mm -hmm. Headsets, again, objects that are passed between lots of people on a regular basis. You may not want to subject them to chemicals because obviously chemicals can degrade objects but as i've just proven with my phone in there yeah that's a, it's a great process for, for yeah sensitive objects you said at the start of the video you're going to give an opportunity to electricians well i've had a little around the back there gordon it's got a 13 amp plug top on i'm not suggesting that's going to be a great opportunity to electricians but where do you want to take us next okay so yes it demonstrates the principle perfectly and deals with all the health and safety aspects in one unit but what we've got here is possibly an even bigger application, Gary, because this unit here will obviously deal with uh, air. Right. So we're talking about yeah, bacteria in the air and viruses in the air, and it will inactivate them. Right. So this one would be ceiling mounted, and the one behind us would be wall mounted in order to, as you said there, inactivate these viruses, etc. Mm. Now, where's the opportunity for the electrician then? Okay, obviously this, this needs careful planning and installation. So that, that is the opportunity. Electricians probably working in lots of sectors that could benefit from right. this. So we're thinking offices again, yeah. areas where members of the public are coming in to give that assurance that the you know, air in that environment, you're, you're doing something to reduce the risk in the area. And that's, yeah. So this, again, this, this looks like, you know, it looks like something off, could be off, uh, off Doctor Who. It looks like some sort of you know, air conditioning unit, something like that. It's not. These black screens you see here right. are designed to shield the user from the UV light. So it can, again, mount it high up on the ceiling. The air passing by the UV light that's emitted from it gets inactivated. Okay, should we take a closer look? Yeah, let's have a look at what's inside. So here's our UV lamp. Again, lots of warning things on there. You wouldn't want to fit this in a regular light fitting, just in specially designed fittings for UVC. Take it out, clear lamp. Um, so how many we've we got in here, Gary? There's four, yeah, around the actual chamber itself. So again, just fit them like uh, those fluorescent lamps were fitting a few years ago, careful handling the glass, but they just click into place. See the unit operating. Now, normally you wouldn't want to see this with your bare eyes. We're just showing this on the camera just so you can see it working to see obviously what's going on inside this air disinfection fitting. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about the safety precautions then, Gordon, when either ceiling or wall mounting this type. Yeah, so again, you don't want to be able to see the light directly with your eyes. Absolutely. So again, careful planning. You wouldn't necessarily install this in an area where possibly say there's a mirror where the light could be reflected back down to where somebody's working. So again, careful planning. It is labelled, obviously, so it's labelled in terms of then obviously maintenance moving forward. You've got to make sure those lamps remain active. Right. They will last for about 9,000 hours before right. the need place. So it's, you know, it's a good a year of continuous use. It is. Uh, yeah. So that's, um, yeah, again, a, a great opportunity. Right, and as we talk about the safety precautions, this is something where Philips can come in and help you. And we're gonna see that when we look at the next one, because as we've gone through these, actually the risk has got greater as we've gone through, and we'll see the, the larger risk actually to the people in the area on the next one. And is that something that they'll help you plan and um, facilitate you within? Yes, yeah, so again, so Philips have a yeah, huge wealth of experience in these in this area. Yeah. And again, it's, 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 a, it's an area, you know, you can, they've even got down to the level where you can do a lighting design within a common lighting design package such as Relux, right. because obviously things we're worried about. And we're gonna look at next in terms of the units behind you. So these look like, uh, look like regular fluorescent batons. They're not, well, they are, but they've been especially adapted to take uh, the UV lamps. You'll notice the plastic parts are shielded. Yeah. So, because UV uh, light over a long period of time can damage plastic components. Right. So they're carefully shielded. But these units are designed to obviously inactivate viruses and bacteria on um, surfaces. Right, okay, just have a look at those then. So we're just gonna fit this T8 UVC tube. So again, it looks like a regular fluorescent tube, but something's missing, Gary. Yeah, the old uh, phosphoro coating on the inside is not there. And obviously those pins are as always are really important. They're nice and straight. Let's see if you can fit one of these in, Gordon. Yeah, so it's just like a, like a regular fluorescent tube to fit there. Obviously you notice this fitting has uh, no exposed plastic parts, obviously because uh, that is sensitive to UVC radiation. Eventually you got it in, so 
quarter of a turn twist. So then we can energize this one up as well. So there you go. Yes, again, we've taken this on a remote camera. You don't want to be in the room when this happens. No, not at all. So the disinfecting process is currently happening, Gordon, then? Yeah, and we'll talk about some of the safety precautions around that. Oh, OK, so we can now see the safety precautions. These, these are going to be open lamps OK, in the area. Gordon, talk me through some of the safety measures I'm going to have taken. Yeah, so again, this needs careful planning yeah. and consideration because, yeah, you would not want to be in the room when those lamps are on. So we need to think about, obviously, door interlocks, yeah. Um, yeah, occupancy sensors to make sure there's nobody in the space. And again, that's where Philips can help with projects to make sure that that's implemented correctly. And obviously you've got to make sure you're getting the right dose of UV light yeah. in the area. That's where the lighting design comes in as well, because things you've got to watch for, things like shadows. So obviously it's just like normal light of something, yeah. If you're, not, uh, if you're not covering an area with light, then it's not doing the disinfection process that it's intended to. So again, careful planning. Okay, you said it was going to do surfaces. Mm. Okay, give us some examples of industry where the surfaces. Yeah, so this. think about food preparation right, okay. areas, possibly uh, canteens. Again, obviously, when there's nobody in there, I think about toilets, washrooms, yeah, facilities like that. Okay, all really clever and interesting stuff, and an opportunity to electricians, isn't it, to install and have help, obviously, with the design as you get used to doing them, and as well as installing these ones as well, Gordon. Yeah, so obviously, hopefully, we've given you a heads up. You know, if you work in some of the sectors where you think this could be yeah. applicable and a benefit, you know, everyone's been through challenging workplace changes at the moment. This could help. Yeah. If you want to get on board with that, Philips have an extensive training program that goes with it to make sure you understand the product and how it's deployed and implemented safely. Absolutely, and that's really important that you undertake that training before installing these items. Mm. So as always, we're interested in your feedback. I'm sure it's a deep breath moment now. This is all new possibly to you. Is it something you're gonna be considering in the future? Do you think it's a really good idea and you'll be quick off the mark in order to get that training and start offering it within the services you currently offer? We'd be interested in your feedback. Please leave that feedback below and we'll try and get back to as many of those comments as we can. Thank <laughs> you.